Hi, you're watching Floyd Steinberg's YouTube channel. Motosynth got a relatively big update some weeks ago, and so far no one talked about this. Which is a shame, because this update is rather chunky, and adds some totally new functions to the Motosynth and its sound shaping possibilities. So in this video, let's take a look at that firmware update and what it can do, and there'll be a lot of sound examples of course as well. If you're interested, please join me in this video. Here we go. So, Motosynth generates sounds by spinning drone motors. The pitch of the nodes is determined by their rotation speed. I backed this on Kickstarter some years ago, and while the hardware was delivered eventually, the software never delivered on the promises of the original campaign. Instead, a Mach 2 model was introduced to the public one year ago, but surprise, surprise, last month a firmware update for the original Mach 1 model appeared out of thin air. Does it deliver the goods? Let's begin with the amplitude envelopes. You can now select from multiple envelope shapes from the normal attack decay, sustain, release to more elaborate and simple setups. Here's an envelope that begins with the delay. And here's one with an extended hold phase. The repeated envelope is fun as well. Filter envelopes received a massive upgrade as well. Instead of an attack hold release envelope, we now have access to multiple envelope types. Here is an example for the looping envelope. Here's the ADSR envelope. All these settings are accessible contextually using the right encoder under the screen. So move the filter envelope encoder and then the right encoder lets you choose the envelope type for example. Cross modulation now has a setup. While moving the cross modulation knob, press the right encoder under the screen to get access to its parameters. As before, you can choose frequency modulation or ring modulation, where ring modulation is an amplitude modulation depending on the frequency of the second motor. Additionally, you can now set the pulse width and the octave of the modulator signal using the right encoder under the screen. Press the encoder to select whether you want to change the octave or the pulse. Worth. This modulation is applied after the filter. Next, let's take a look at the arpeggiator, which got a nice upgrade as well. You can access this by pushing the play mode encoder, then turn it right to activate the arpeggiator. Press the latch button to hold the notes playing. We can now explore the arpeggiator options. Push the left encoder to go through these. We've got note repeat, pattern length, and we can put an accent on certain notes. 
is also octave range. Using the left encoder we can access more options. Mode can be up, down, random and a lot more. Time division is the length of the arpeggiated notes. Gate length is how long the key is held, so to speak. And we've got swing. Ok, let's add a bit of delay in the keyboard before exploring the next part. Now push the arrow left key to see this screen where parameters for the individual arpeggiated steps can be set up. Select the step you want to work on by pushing one of the 8 keys in the middle. You can select multiple steps by pushing more than one key simultaneously. Now push one of the four encoders in the bottom middle to select what you want to change. For example, we can change the node probability of the step selected. You can also use a ratcheting effect on each step, which will repeat the node as many times as displayed. Turn the control knob to select the other 8 steps possible in the arpeggiator sequence. It's also possible to have the arpeggiator work on only one of the motors. For this, push the poly mode button and then the right arrow button twice. Now you can turn off the arpeggiator for the motors you like to play normally. Let's take a look at the sequencer now. You can access the sequencer by pushing the play mode encoder. Select sequencer and push again. There's a 16 step grid now and as in the arpeggiator you can select the steps you're working on with keys in the middle. The four encoders will then change various parameters. The left encoder will change the note value of that step for example. Push the control button to mute or unmute a note. So in order to start the sequencer you first need to turn it on by using the play mode encoder. Once it's turned on you can then push the play stop button to start and stop the sequencer. Well I'm going to enter some notes here and play the result. Once finished with a pattern, you can press the arrow right to add another pattern, with a maximum of 8 different patterns. Once recorded, you can then press the presets encoder to go to the cue screen. Here you can arrange your patterns into a sequence. Hold record and press the keys to line up the patterns you created. You can also hold record and press one of the four encoders to line up folders of sequences so to speak. With that you should be able to create a traditional song structure with intro, chorus, verse and bridge. Another great addition is motion recording which lets you record the movements of the encoders on the synth. To access this push the play mode encoder and select motion recording. Now you can see 4 tracks and each one can hold one recording. You can select tracks with the presets encoder. Hold the record button to start recording and here of course I'm recording filter cutoff frequency. Now that recording will loop continuously, but you can press the right arrow on the screen to change that behavior. For example, you can sync it to the tempo of your project.
The last thing I want to show you is one of the additions to the audio input processing. Here I've connected my audio recorder's line out to the audio in on the back of the synth. Now if you press the play mode encoder, there'll be an input envelope follower option on the left side. Select this and now you can set up its behavior on the right side. Basically we can operate in ducking mode or in gate mode. And here is ducking. And this is the gate mode. This update adds a lot of more stuff and most of the things I showed you today can be used simultaneously. You can look this all up in the manual, which I linked in this video's description. Oh, by the way, no one watched last week's video in which I built a physical or real-world delay effect using three microphones. I totally understand you dislike sponsored content, but I think this was one of my better videos and if you want to see it, it's linked on screen right now. Oh, by the way, if you like content like this, and if you want to see more on the motor synth in the future, please consider subscribing to my channel. And if you want to support what I'm doing here financially, you can become a channel member using the button under this video, or join my Patreon, link is in this video's description. Thank you very much. And that's it for today. Motorsynth firmware 1.2 update. It only took two years for this to finish. All in all, I'm quite pleased with what's possible now. But I also remember the Kickstarter promised a vocoder. And while the sequencer is off to a good start, it would be nice to have it polyphonic and to have swing like the arpeggiator has. But I'm not here to complain. I'm happy this happened at all. And having the new envelopes is really great. So if you found this video interesting, interesting, please consider subscribing to my channel. And as always, thanks for watching and see you again very very soon. Bye bye!